All right, let's go ahead and get started. Um, I'd like to welcome everyone to our webinar this morning on condition monitoring, and thank you for taking time out of your day. My name is Matt Austin. I'm the Corporate Industry Manager for Parcel Handling for Sumitomo. I hope you and your families are healthy and coping with the COVID-19 uh, COVID guidelines. Presenting today is Mr. Adam Soder. Adam is our uh, Product System Reliability Manager. Um, I have a couple housekeeping issues before we get going. Today's presentation will be recorded and sent out to everyone in uh, a few days after we do a little editing, um, put some things at the beginning and the end. So that should be coming out fairly quickly. So if anybody from your corporation wasn't able to join, um, you can show them the recording to them. Also, everybody's microphone will be muted during the webinar. At the very end, there should be plenty of times for question and answers. There is a, a button that uh, Adam has put up there. If you hover over the presentation, that bar should come up. If you click on the circled icon there, the little conversation bubble, it will tell you that you can, you click on that, then it will open up a window where you can chat. And down at the very bottom, there's a window where you can type in your questions and hit enter and they will show up. Uh, if your question is very topical for exactly what we're talking about, I may stop Adam and uh, recite the question to him so he can answer it. If not, we'll get to him at the end. So once again, welcome. And at that, I'll turn it over to Adam. All right, well, thank you very much, Matt. Uh, welcome everybody to our uh, presentation here. We'll go ahead and get started. Uh, as Matt said, I hope everybody's safe uh, with everything with our little bit of new normal here. So we're all working from home. So glad everybody could join us today uh, to cover this topic. Um, so what we'll go over today is a little bit of predictive maintenance and how the condition monitoring is coming to a coming to age, if you will, in parcel handling in all industries, really. But we'll try to focus directly on parcel handling. Uh, so we'll go ahead and get started. So first, what is predictive maintenance? So the definition is there on your screen. Uh, basically, it's just the ways ways to get ahead of the maintenance curve, if you will. And uh, you want to be able to get the most life out of your components, whatever it may be, gearboxes, motors, conveyor belts, whatever the case may be. The idea is to get ahead of the curve. And when I say the curve, it's this P to F curve that I'm sure some people have seen before. Uh, the main the main points here is that the P on that curve is the potential failure and F is the functional failure. We all know that that uh, components have a, uh, an, a lifespan to them. We all know things are going to wear out, things will fail. So the idea is to, to make that time on the bottom there as many years as possible. Obviously, the scale there is in 50 years, 70 years. We'd love all our components to last that long, but we, we know that's just not reasonable. So this is just for an example. Um, but so just for some examples of other maintenance that we've you've been doing for, for years, oil changes and eventually changing the reducer, you kind of see where they sit on the curve. Uh, parcel, uh, excuse me, condition monitoring would be somewhere up here on this curve, somewhere before the P, because it allows you to get change the reducer or make any changes to the system to get the longest life out of that gearbox. So your your IP interval here that's shown would be more like 50 years instead of the 30 that's shown if we use this scale that's shown here. So that just gives you an idea where predictive maintenance is uh, as far as maintenance goes versus oil changes and, and other maintenance items. So traditional condition analysis, uh, condition monitoring, if you will, another way to look at it, there, there's normally a reliability specialist on, on staff, whether it's just a maintenance technician or a dedicated vibration analyst, whatever the case may be, where he's going to go around, he's going to get all the data he can he can uh, he or she i should say get all the data they can find whether it's vibration temperature uh, amp draws any data they can think of for their system based on their application shown here is an example of vibration data this is a waterfall chart as referred to in the industry it just compares different vibration readings for different days different months to be able to see what's going on in the trend of the system now all this data gets analyzed gets recorded gets analyzed by this this person here being able to know what the data is telling him. He understands what it means, understands where the data has been, understands where the data is going to be able to predict a failure uh, ahead of the curve, as I mentioned before. But the problem is the systems now, the conveyor systems in general, parcel ex especially, they're getting more and more complicated. There's so many different objects. There's so many different systems, different versions of systems. It's hard for one person or even a team of person to stay 
abreast of all the different changes that's going on. So we, they need the new systems now allow them to collect all the data more seamlessly, be able to uh, understand the data more, record the data more, analyze it more efficiently, things like that. So the systems are getting more complex. One person can't necessarily do the job anymore. So it's a matter of getting all the data much easier. Now, as I mentioned, this is just an example of, of the sortation systems in a parcel facility. They're much bigger than this in some cases, and they're much smaller than this. But the, the point here is the <clears throat> there's a large quantity of assets in there from the feeders, the sorters, diverters, your, your lateral feeds, your main, your primary drives, different sorters, singulated flow, bulk flow designs, different OEMs, different vendors, all that. All the systems are slightly different. They're doing the same thing, but the designs are a little bit different. So you really have to stay ahead of what's going on with each system. You really need to know each system. And with the limited workforce in some of these buildings, some some of the smaller buildings having only one or two mechanics with one uh, engineer on staff in some cases, and some buildings don't have any engineers. They're uh, local to another building, and it's hard to get them around to do this analysis. So with one of the condition monitoring systems, it allows that same reliability guy, he's doing the same job, same job, has that same technician, but he can go in and pull the data up and being able to sit right at his computer, log into the system, pull the data for the monitoring system that's running for his conveyor. So we'll zoom in a little bit on this example of this data here. Just by looking at this screen, the technician now knows that unit is low on oil. You can see here by the top, the oil level is in the red. Otherwise, the temperature is okay. The vibration levels are okay. So he knows just at a glance that everything's going, everything's running normally. So it allows that technician to do his job more efficiently for the entire system. Now this, this example here is just one power unit, one reducer, if you will, the, the one object. Uh, and, but when you get a full blown in-depth system, you're monitoring every component in that facility and there'd be a whole bunch of green, yellow, red bars there showing on the screen. So it allows them to, more, much more efficiently gather all that data and review the data uh, in a much better way. So an example of a case study. So I'll go back to the, the large facilities. All the speeds are different. All the vibration analysis with speed is different. Uh, vibration analysis itself has come a long way. The technology is getting better. So you, sometimes you need uh, a skilled or a certified analyst to be able to analyze the data, understand the data, as I said before. And what we've been doing in the past at these facilities is, is to, a mechanic would go out, the unit is loud. Okay, well, how loud is too loud? Is it is it loud to one person and it's not as loud to another? It's the same thing for temperature. Okay, it feels hot when I touch it, but I, I don't know what it was yesterday. So it's very subjective. So there's a lot of issues that that can happen that you're trying to relate to an issue from your experience, but somebody else's experience is much different. So with this, with this case study, we we're trying to get away from that. So having a monitoring system was the end goal. So while we were do, collecting a whole bunch of data, so we had a power unit, multiple power units. We were recording a whole bunch of data, vibration, temperature, uh, reducer temperature, ambient temperature, motor amp draw, things like that. And during the test, we actually had one that was failing. Uh, it actually catastrophically failed. So after we went back and looked at the data, looked at the failure mode and, and determined what the vibration was actually telling us, we were able to relate it to a condition monitoring system that we now have implemented today. So for an example, from this data, in the beginning there, that trend would have, the, the alarm, if you will, would have been running in the green. It's everything's normal. It's been there for a while, slight increase. So that tells us something's going on based on the data. So then we would probably trigger a yellow light. Now from there, the yellow light would be a, uh, an action for an oil change, go check your belt tension, go check your slider beds, make sure there's no jams, things of that nature. So that would have been the alarm at this case. That would have been the steps when you see that yellow alarm. So then when the data keeps going, oh, that means there's a red. So that tells you right there, this is heading towards failure. They're quote unquote, it's not fixing itself. They never do. Uh, and it's time to take advantage of this system and prevent the downtime. So when that red light would have came on in our test, that would have been a three month period that a person could have scheduled the repair, repair, replaced it on a Saturday when there was no sorting, no operation running and not lose any production. Then once they replaced it, the new reducer, the vibration went right back down to what a new, new reducer would have been. So 
Well, another thing we learned from this too, temperature data, with this type of failure, some of these gearboxes, temperature doesn't increase when the unit fails. So for years, we've been using thermal imaging and, and temperature monitoring, which is a great method, but it doesn't always get all failure modes. So with temperature monitoring alone, we, we didn't see a change in temperature, yet this unit still failed. So just a little tidbit there, vibration is definitely the, the earliest indicator of potential failure, which is usually why our, our systems that we sell, our vibration is the key point of our condition monitoring systems. Now, looking at condition monitoring in a whole, there's plenty of different methods of using uh, data to understand what is going on with the assets and being able to understand uh, potential failures. Now, all of them, are very, they can be similar. Vibration and ultrasound monitoring, c it can be argued that they're the same essential, same, uh, same fail faults that you can find on either one, just a different microphone. But all these systems, they're, they're available. There's plenty of different options in the industry for them. Now, you see that's a lot of data. Now, when you go to your your system, okay, say you take a, a that um, sorting facility that I showed before. You have different assets, as I mentioned, and you want to do vibration, temperature, ambient, both ambient temperature and component surface temperature as well, and motor amp draw. So, say you want to do those uh, those four items there. And then you start thinking about how many conveyors you have. So, you have four options per conveyor. This picture only shows five conveyors. Most of these facilities have 500 conveyors. So just imagine all the data that you're going to have going on uh, in, into, a, into a condition monitoring system. It gets very overwhelming. It turns into uh, just a dumping of data that in the end you might not need. So as I mentioned with the temperature example before, temperature didn't really help us. It didn't predict the failure. We, we noticed there was a vibration increase way before the temperature even changed. So we wouldn't want to even do temperature in this case. So it's good to have it, but you don't necessarily need it. So there's some data that you don't necessarily need <clears throat> when you're doing a condition monitoring system like this. So it's something to keep in mind. Now the way to pick which components, so you have there's different assets, as I mentioned, your conveyors, your motors, your, your gearboxes. The idea is to set a criticality score to each one of those. So if you have to analyze your system, analyze your, your, your process flow and see which one is the most critical and you assign it to these different tiers. This is just an example of, of different consequences if you looked at it that way. But once you assign that, that will tell you which systems are key components that you would need a condition monitoring system for. Just some examples from my experience with parcel handling. Your sorters, they're definitely going to be catastrophic. If you're not sorting, you're done for the day. You're, you're losing all sorts of production. So that would definitely be a candidate for a condition monitoring system. Your primaries, they are critical, absolutely, but maybe not as critical as a sortation because there might be workarounds depending on the building. Uh, there might be ways to, to manually get, get uh, parcels moving. So it kind of goes down the scale. Now, transport belts that are just moving from one end to the other, we could always go manually on those. So the consequences, they would be a little it'll slow things down, but things will keep moving. Whereas if you stop a sorter, nothing's moving. So you can kind of see the, the criticality difference there. And for negligible, they're very low on the list, loaders on loaders. You could always manually have uh, get a couple more uh, package handlers and really get the trucks loaded and unloaded if need be. So you don't necessarily need a monitoring system there. Now, again, these are just recommendations. It's all depending on your specific needs of your facility, making sure every asset is covered uh, to your needs. As I said, you don't necessarily need a, a fan that cools off uh, a truck in the winter, so you don't necessarily need that being monitored. So different examples like like that. So as I mentioned, the, the size of these facilities and the size of these buildings, there's so much data there. Uh, let's not think that everything has to have it. We want to make sure that obviously we would love to have millions of, our, of different condition monitoring systems out there, but we know that it's not realistic to to get it on every single one. We're willing to we're willing to help out and figure out which ones need it and come up with this criticality score, as I mentioned. So, so that was the gist of this. I know it was a quick one. Uh, we wanted to. We know we're everybody's working from home, so we wanted to keep it brief and uh, keep everybody on track. So I'll go ahead and and kind of pause here. If anybody has any questions or anything you'd like to go, I would I would go in a little deeper. So please let me know. <clears throat> 